What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the Dabson DBS 1000 Pro. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 1024 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 2000 watt power handling with a peak of 4000 watts, a 1200 watt solar charging input, a 5 year warranty, and is very lightweight at only 34 pounds. Besides the main power station, I also have their expansion battery, and this is the DBS 2000B. This is 2,048 watt hours, so when combined, this is a total of 3,072 watt hours. Adding this also boosts the AC output from 2,000 watts up to 2,400 watts. All right, so taking a look at the power station itself, this is definitely a very nice looking power station. I love the simple all black look it has going on but then you also have the silver accents which give it somewhat of a high-tech look. The shell on this is plastic, but it is a thick and rugged plastic. Inside of it, you have an aluminum alloy structure. So if this accidentally falls or you bump it hard with something, it won't be an issue as it does have that strength inside of it as well. So taking a look at your ports right here, you have three USB-C ports. Two of these are 100 watts and the other one is 30 watts. A lot of power stations have two USB-C ports, but this is one of the first time that I actually see three of them, so that's a nice little bonus. Right over here, you have three USB-A ports. One of them is five volts, 2.4 amps, and these two here are fast charging ports. Right in the middle here, you have a built-in flashlight, and this has low mode, high mode, and SOS mode. Coming to the right side, you have your DC cigarette lighter output, and this can do a maximum of 10 amps. Right down here, you have two more DC outputs and these can do four amps. Coming to the right side, you have four AC outlets and right in the middle, you have your parallel port as this does support linking up to another power station for more capacity and output as well. Then over here on the other side, you have an AC charging speed switch and that's the first time I have seen this on any power station so far. Typically, you can change this in the app, but I've never seen it as a physical switch on the power station. So if you wanna charge it slowly, put it down the slow. But if you want a much quicker charge, you can switch it up right there to fast. Right next to that, you have your XT60 port for solar charging, your AC input, your circuit reset button, and then also something else I have not seen in any other power station. Right here, you have a data port, which I'm assuming is for the factory to diagnose or update the power station. Right below that, we have two more ports. As you can see, I have one plugged in already, and that's the link cable to link the other battery to the power station. And then right down here, you also have one more of those in case you want to add two batteries to this power station. So taking a look at the ports on the expansion battery, right here you have your input cable that's linked right down to the main power station. Over here you have your solar slash car charging input. Coming to the front you have two USB-C ports which both put out 100 watts and then right over here you have two USB-A ports which are fast charging ports as well. So if you want it, you could just take this expansion battery to charge your USB devices. This is a very large capacity for only USB things. So if you're charging a laptop on this, I'm sure you could probably charge your laptop more than 30, 40 times and it'll still have some extra power left over. As I said earlier, this is a total of 3,072 watt hours for both of these batteries. And this is by far the most portable and lightest 3,000 watt setup I've tested so far. Usually when you go into this range of 3,000 watt hours, you typically have a lot more weight and it's usually a much more bulky unit. And I'm also a huge fan of expansion batteries because if you're going somewhere, you don't need that much power. You can just take the smaller one battery by itself but then if you need the extra power, you can go ahead and take the expansion as well. So it gives you a lot more flexibility compared to one altogether 3000 watt hour unit. Beside the setup that I have here, you can also expand this in several different ways as well. So each of these power stations can handle two batteries. So this plus the two batteries can give you somewhere about 5000 watt hours. But if you wanted even more power, you can buy a second DB1000 Pro along with two more expansion batteries as well. So that'll be two main units and four expansion batteries and that'll give you a total of 10,240 watt hours. Besides the extra capacity, adding the extra unit with the extra batteries will also bump your AC output to 4,400 watts. So regardless if you need a small unit to go camping or a whole home backup solution, you can do it just by expanding this one power station. As I said earlier, these both run on a LifePo4 battery and are rated to maintain a 80% capacity for 4,500 cycles. 
that's more than 15 years of usage out of these units. Most other LiPo 4 power stations are only rated for about 3,000 to 3,500 cycles before that 80% mark. So these are actually a lot better than most of the other power stations out there as well. So as far as charging goes, this can do 1,500 watts through the AC input and this will charge it from 0 to 80% in only 50 minutes. So definitely a very quick charging speed. When it comes to solar, this has a 1,200 watt solar charging input, but this can also take 1,200 watts as well. So if you're charging them both, you can actually have a total of 2,400 watts of solar charging going into these both batteries. All right, so I drained this combination from 100% to zero using about a 1,000 watt load, and it put out a total of 2,754 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 82%, most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is right there on par with most other units. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this can do 2,000 watts with a peak of 4,000 watts. I'm not even going to bother with phones or laptops or anything small like that because 2,000 watts is a lot of power and it can most definitely run those small things no problem at all. If you hooked up a large USB strip to the AC port, I'm sure this can charge probably 100 phones and still have some power left over. So let me go ahead and hook up a few different things here and put it close to that 2000 watt limit to see if it can actually do its rated power. All right, so I went ahead and hooked up a few different things. So I have this heater here, this other large heater here, and then a 14,000 BTU air conditioner over here. And as you can see, it's pulling a total of 2,367 watts. And it's been handling it for the last two minutes, no problem at all. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run a little longer and see if it can hold on to that 2,300 watts. So it's been a little over six, seven minutes and it's still running them, no problem at all. So it definitely can do a rated power that it's advertised to do. Another thing I realized is at full wattage, these appliances actually want to draw more than that 2300 watts. When I first turned them all on, it was around 2900 watts, but this power station has a feature called P-Boost. And what this does is basically scale down the power and run appliances like this at lower wattage. If this was a voltage sensitive device, such as a computer or anything else that requires the full power that it needs, then it wouldn't work. But with anything like heaters, electric skillets, air conditioners, or Anything that's like resistive or doesn't require its full voltage requirement to run, that will work on P-Boost. So like I said, right now I have these two heaters and the air conditioner and they're all working with that P-Boost. So definitely a really cool feature to have with other power stations. This would have just tripped up the power station and give you an error code. But as I said, this allows you to run more thanks to that P-Boost. So this power station does have both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi app connectivity, and this is hands down the best app I have seen with any other power station so far. Typically, a lot of these apps are just very simple apps that only have toggles to turn on your AC and DC output, but this has some very interesting features. So just to go over the entire app, right here on top, you have your battery percentage, right here you have how long it's gonna last, your charge speed, down here you have two different tabs, so you have one for your input, it'll tell you all your inputs there. With this one, you have all your outputs and you can toggle these on or off right here from the app. Right down here, it shows you the status of your expansion battery. And then last but not least down here, you have your flashlight toggle. My favorite feature is right up here in the settings tab and that is this part here, which says time management. So besides turning the power station on and off, you can actually schedule it to do just about everything as well. I've seen scheduled shutdowns, like you can turn off the power station after two or three hours, something like that. But this one, you can have a scheduled startup, shutdown, scheduled charging, and scheduled discharging. So a lot of different things you can do here to make sure your battery is on when you want it to be and make sure it's not on when you don't want it to be. So while this seems simple, this is not something I've seen on any other power station. This gives you a whole different level of control and management than you can do with this power station. One of the reasons I really like these features is with other power stations, if I want to charge them with solar, I got to leave it on overnight so that when the sun comes up, it can be ready to take that power. But this one, I can just turn it off and I know the sun's going to come up around 5 a.m. So I can go ahead and schedule it start at 5 a.m. Then I know the sun's going to start going down about 7 p.m. So I can just schedule it to turn off at that time. So pretty much this power station can manage itself. I can walk away from it for weeks or months and it's still gonna be completely managing itself without my input. 
So going over some of your other settings, you have your charge and discharge settings right here up top. You can change your output voltage from anywhere from 100 to 120 volts. You have your AC charging speed, which you can set from anywhere from 50 watts all the way up to 1800 watts. I've seen some flexibility in other power stations, but never this much here. So definitely nice to have that as well. So you can charge it as fast or as slow as you want. And then you have this toggle here, which is for fast charging mode to charge it at the maximum charging speed you can get. And that's pretty much it for the settings. But overall, like I said, definitely one of the best apps out there. It's not just a gimmicky app with random toggles, but it actually has a lot of useful features to actually make me want to use the app. I know a lot of people get nervous when it comes to storing large batteries like this in their house, but rest assured you don't have anything to worry about as this does have an advanced BMS. This continuously monitors and protects the power station from over voltage, short circuits, temperatures, and many other things as well. Overall, this is definitely a solid power station. It comes at a good price, performs well, and I love all the options you have to expand your battery capacity. So overall, if you happen to be looking for a mid to large size power station, I would definitely recommend this one here, which again is the Dabson DBS 1000 Pro. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.